Okay, Mr. Martinez, um, I'm just going to go over uh, the instructions you gave me. Uh, apparently, I serviced this watch back in 2016, and that the servicing signature that I couldn't read was mine. So maybe I had to work more on my penmanship. Um, one thing you you asked, you said you, you didn't talk about a case rebuild. You said all new seals, um, which is fine. In order for me to do all new seals, because the crystal has two, one, two, three, four, five case back, six, seven, the whole case has to come apart. So that's basically, it's a case rebuild. So this is gonna get fully cleaned and it's gonna be beautiful, just like the moon phase. But I just wanted to go over that. You also stated you, you liked the patina on the hands, which is fine, and the dial. You didn't want me to clean the loom. The one thing is that there is some loose paint right there. At the very least, I need to glue, you know, secure that down. I use a clear binder, a clear enamel binder, and you can't see it if it's done correctly. And that's what I'm going to do. So we are going to go through. We are going to service. We're going to do the, we're going to do it. We're going to do it like right now. Thanks, by the way, for getting back to me so quickly. Okay. Okay, there's your dial. And your hands, obviously. Okay, well, let's pull those hands. I'm just looking at the loom condition because you said you like the uh, the patina on it. I'm making sure the loom is not damaged. I will clean the hands. Like, I'm not going to restore the loom, but I'm going to clean them. Um, and they will definitely, it'll make the surface look better and all that. But it won't look, like, different. It'll just look cleaner. I'm just sort of seeing what I'm going to be dealing with here. I mean, it has been quite some time since I've seen this. Come on.
Okay, here's your dial. I may be able to improve your Seiko logo. So that's something I'm gonna consider doing. It wouldn't look different, except that it would look better. Cause right now, it could, it could be better. This isn't touching your loom or anything. It's just something that I would do. So I'm gonna look at that, but not right now. I've got my, my hands full. Yeah, I, I can do things now that I couldn't in 2016, especially with repairing that kind of damage and stuff. I mean, ditto for this. I have a way to deal with this uh, these corrosion things. Anyway, there's the front of your movement. So let's go over here. Why are you wiggling, Mr. Movement Holder? We're going to have to have a talk about that. It's a little hazy. Don't you worry. I have some techniques now that I didn't back then. 2016, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. At least I hope that it's a pleasant surprise, not an unpleasant one. That, by the way, is your circuit. those coils out of here. There are a few crazy delicate things about doing a 7A. One of them is you got to be careful about these, these parts. It's really easy to jack one up if you get a, if you get a blade strike I have to look at this movement holder. My goodness. Okay. Those ones are out. <laughs> Sorry for all the screaming. It's raining, and so everybody's inside. Come on. Out we get. Come on, come on. Ah. Give me. And there we have, there's the heart of the movement. These are all your bridges. There's your keyless works. Chronograph main sweep. This huge bridge, it goes all the way under here. This is, this is all the stuff. It's, there's like 14 pivots that bolt into this lower one. And it's, that one's gnarly. It really, really, really is. Anyway. But these are all the other separate trains for the for timekeeping. I mean, for chronographing. <laughs> so the next thing to do is let's pull that chronograph bridge, so you can kind of see the glory.
Okay, so that's that third screw. This little thing right here, this is the friction spring. This is to make sure that the, uh, the sweep hand stops so it doesn't like sort of slide around. It stops every time, kind of a cool little diddly. Okay, and there that is. That's your little chronograph bridge right there. And here is your main sweep. It's a little dirty. Right around that tip, I can see it. So anyway, this is the main bridge. This is the one that's the, the Wonelli. Because all these pivots and that wheel and all this stuff, it's easy enough to take it apart, but putting it back together, mm, boy. Let's, uh, let's get these. These are your clicker switches. Right here, when you push a button, it goes click, click, click. That's what that is. Let's get those off of there. Ah, I, there you are. How dare you. Darn it. Okay. So now I'm going to rip this thing down to the main plate, but I'm not going to do it on camera. The pivots on these are really, really, really super fine, and they are extra easy to, to mess up, and I've got to lay things out properly so that I don't have to scratch my head and try to figure out what in the heck goes where. So you're going to see me come back after everything's cleaned and I've gotten to the point basically of, of rebuilding the movement. Yeah, looking good. And then uh, I'll, I'll service it. We'll time it up, make sure it's good, and then get this going. Okay, as I said... You got to do the thing. Let's find your cutout. Yeah, there it is. Right there. 30 minute mark. Is that it? Are you sure, Spencer? Yep, that's it. There's your cutout right there. Now, sometimes these 7A bezels, they can be kind of persnickety. When it comes to snapping off, sometimes you have to really... Oh, come on. Yeah, it's dirty. It'll be beautiful when it's clean. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Rotating ring gasket get all jacked up, but that's okay. I have more. So that will get hand cleaned. And that will get hand cleaned. Let's get this off. Okay, got those buttons. Let's uh, let's get that crystal out. Here I am with my fantabulous vigor made in Japan remover. And I'll clean the glass too. There's your there's your tucky ring. There's your, that's the old nylon gasket. Oh no, that's the spacer ring. Uh, there's your old nylon gasket. Here's your crystal. Crystal will get cleaned and it will be beautiful. Okay, now is the time to do these things. Got all my little C-clips off. Yeah, definitely gonna need your cleaning. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, 
and definitely feels gummy. Come on, out, out, out. Out. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely needs a case rebuild. Come on, come on, come on. Out we got. I know it's been a hard, hard series of years here, but out. Yeah, look at that gasket. Ah, oh, it's crazy. All right, cool. Um, what are we looking at? Hmm, it's dirty. That's it. It's really about it. Okay, so we got the case apart. All this stuff, I'm going to clean those buttons. All this stuff is going to go through the various hand cleanings and ultrasonics. I'm going to hand clean all this stuff, and then I'm going to do... I'm going to do a fair amount of, like, corrosion remediation. Because you've got some little things on the movement, not a lot. I'm just going to make it look better. Okay, I will come back when I am basically done. Here we are. This is post-restoration. These are the numbers that we're getting right now. I'm sure you remember from the last time this watch was in here, in 2016... These are, this is right here, that's a second, so we got zero. That's tenths of a second, that's hundredths of a second. So right now it's running at about, you know, 0. 0.3 seconds fast a day. Okay, let's try this. So there's your movement, post-restoration. There's the little deck dock that it's on. And here are our numbers. Currently right now it's gaining... Oh, I don't know, about a third, about a third of a second a day. We should be able to get it tighter than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to adjust this thing. I'm going to take it off and take it down and adjust it. And then I'll be, I'll come right back. Yeah, I did one adjustment. Let's see what happens. I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way. Hmm. That's, uh, that's six one-hundredths of a second a day, eight one-hundredths. As the movement runs in, this number is actually going to drop. So when I do a, f a fresh rebuild on a quartz, I want to see it, see? I want to see it just a little higher than zero, because as it runs in, it's going to drop. Four-tenths, four one-hundredths of a second per day. That's That's really, really good. Wow, sometimes getting these dialed in takes me forever. I did it with one adjustment. Huh, that's nuts. Waiting to see how steady the numbers are. I'm very happy so far. I will check that. Uh, I'll continue to check that and uh, we'll see, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling it. Um, I'm just thinking here for a second. Yeah, I'm I'm perfectly happy with those numbers. Um, okay, let's. I'm going to start assembling now. So anyway, there she is. So that's your, obviously, that is your original loom in the dial and hands. I did manually clean them with Rotico. And they cleaned up, whether I wanted to or not, they cleaned up a little bit. But the fact that that stuff, you know, came off uh, is indicative that it needed to come out. But the rest of your loom is just fine. I firmed up the, two, the hand loom because they were... Both loom plots are pretty delicate, so I used a clear binder on the back, and that holds them in. I did repair the white paint right there, because the paint was flaking off. So I firmed it back in place. It's serviced up very nicely. It's 
clicks along nicely. We can see how all the hands work. Let's see, split time, huh? Yep. That's about it. That one's done. So that's the end of this video. And after this, uh, I'll finish the Moonface video. Cool. Thank you so much.